Hello and welcome, welcome to, to a brand new series of Sky High. High. I'm, I'm Lucy Kite, Kite and, and this is the first time I've flown in a helicopter for any length of time, so I'm really looking forward to it. Now, now as ever, we have the same pilot, Mark Barry Jackson, or BJ as he likes to be called. He's outside at the moment getting the aircraft ready, which gives me just enough time to tell you all about this new series. The shape of our region is covered in roughly by 18 counties. So, in this new series, we'll look at two in each programme and give you a feel for the landscapes, cities and towns, as well as some of their interesting places. Now, we've also got a great competition. Each week, we'll be giving away a helicopter flight. So, you and three of your friends could take the skies, just like we do in the series. Now, the question will relate to today's flight, so pay attention. Once we've taken off, I'll give you all the details. Hi, Hi, BJ. Is everything ready? ready? Yep, yep, we're all ready to go. Great. And have, have you decided, decided which two counties, counties we're going to be looking at? Well, well I quite fancy going south-west south west flyover Worcestershire and, and Herefordshire. Yep. Does that sound alright? Yep, that's good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. The county is dominated by two features, the River Severn and the Malvern Hills. The river enters the county in the north, where the Severn Valley Railway crosses it over a cast iron bridge. It then flows south through Worcester before leaving the county just north of Tewkesbury. To the west of the Severn are the Malvern Hills, and along the centre runs the border with Herefordshire. One famous Western man springs to mind when looking at these hills as he walked on them for inspiration. The composer Edward Elgar. Elgar, one of England's greatest composers, was born here at Broadheath, to the west of Worcester. At the age of ten, he was found sitting on a riverbank trying to write down what the reeds are saying. Today, a museum and centre has been built behind the house to cope with the huge number of visitors. Elgar's father ran a music shop in Worcester, a county town. Dominated by the cathedral, Worcester is the city most associated with Bone, China, and the Royal Worcester Factory. This stands close to the River Severn, where barges could take deliveries down to the port at Gloucester. It was founded back in 1751 and has been going ever since. From Worcester, it's only about five miles or so to the Malvern Hills. This 650 million year old limestone outcrop rises out of low ground in the Severn Valley and dominates the whole area. It makes the hills some of the oldest in the world. The name derives from the Celtic term for the Bear Hill, and it's said that on a clear day it's possible to see 15 counties from the top of the Worcestershire Beacon, the hill towards the north end of the ridge. In the 18th century, the area became fashionable for the waters, and the town of Great Malvern grew up on the east side in the shadow of the hills. Even Queen Victoria came here to sample the water, which rises from several springs. Now, if you would love to fly like this, it's time to answer that all-important question. I'll also remind you again as we go along, so here it is. I mentioned a composer earlier who was inspired by the Malvern Hills. Was it A. George Handel, B. Edward Elgar, 
or C, Benjamin Britten. Now, later on in the programme, we'll be giving you a clue, so look out for that. But if you think you know the answer, then phone 0901 130 0130 or text the word SKY followed by A, B or C to 6334. Calls cost 50 pence and the lines close at midnight tonight, so good luck. Okay, okay, back, back to Worcestershire, and this is a county full of beautiful houses from almost every age and all types of architecture. Close to the Malvern Hills is a very good example of this. Burtsmorton Court is a few miles to the southeast, and the house stands in a small lake. There's been a house here since the 13th century, and the gatehouse is from this early period. Since then, the house has been pushed and pulled in almost every century, including a wing from the 1920s. It really is a beautiful bit of England. In the late 17th century, Hamry Hall was built. It's a few miles to the east of Droitwich. This is a house in the Christopher Wren style with a symmetrical design, built of brick and using sash windows that had only just been introduced into the country. By the 18th century, the style had changed and Hadley Hall, which is close to Stourbridge, is built in a classical style. Ancient Rome has had an enormous influence on English architecture and Hadley is a perfect example of this classical style. The house was built for Lord Littleton in the late 1750s and was designed to give the owner a feeling of Roman grandeur. In the park, he even built a classical temple that could easily have come from the ancient world. This obelisk is also a classical design, but just over the trees is a reminder of our century and the suburbs of Stourbridge. Now, to the southeast of the county and running along the border with Gloucestershire is the Vale of Evesham, which is very important for fruit and veg. Sheltered by the Cotswolds and with a plentiful supply of water from the Avon, every variety of vegetable can be grown here, especially asparagus, which is auctioned off each year. More importantly, the area is known for its fruit growing, in particular apples. There's even a Worcester apple, which is sweet, with a hint of strawberry. And talking of food, one ingredient we find it hard to do without is salt, and Worcestershire is famous for it. Droitwich, a few miles north of Worcester, has been digging up salt since Roman times. Seawater is only 3% salt. Under Droitwich, the streams are 25% salt. However, by the 19th century, the industry had peaked and gradually declined, but the town then prospered as a spa. Today you can experience that floating feeling in the Brian Bass Complex, which opened in 1985. And one of the reasons people could get to places like Droitwich were the new steam trains. A restored line, the Seven Valley Railway, runs between Kidderminster and Bridge North in Shropshire. The railway is not only a great day out, but also gives us a fascinating glimpse back to the age of steam. But before the arrival of steam, it was canals that fueled an industry. And the largest inland port is at Stour Port on Severn, close to Kidderminster. Here in the mid 18th century, the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal joined the River Severn. And so, and so goods, goods from, from the Midlands could then get, get easily down the River Severn to Gloucester and seagoing cargo ships. 
This, this inland, inland port is, is now a haven for the private narrow base. Today, Today transport needs to be as fast, fast as possible, and cutting, cutting through Worcestershire is the M5 that runs down to the West Country, and the M42 that runs off into Warwickshire. Well, that's it for Worcestershire. In part two, we'll travel to the stunning countryside of Herefordshire. But before we break, here's a reminder of that question that could win you a fantastic flight here in the helicopter. The Malvern Hills are associated with a very famous British composer. Is it A. George Handel, B. Edward Elgar, or C. Benjamin Britten? The numbers on the screen say have a go. Remember, the lines play at midnight. Hey BJ, what about a clue? Well, the band we're looking for wrote the well known Land of Open Glory. Ah, is that any help? Well, we're back after the break. We'll see you then. If you think all the world is one place in tranquility. Any idea you want to take your music? None, I'm afraid. Think again. The village will twitch your curves and Christian is zealous. As you sow, so shall you reap. Yes, that's right. 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 Yes, that's Which, which lies to, to the, the west, west of Worcestershire, and as you can see, is roughly the same size. On the county's eastern side, as we've seen, are the Malvern Hills. On the west side, the Black Mountains of Wales, and to the south, the beautiful Wye Valley and the spectacular Simmons Yacht, where the River Wye leaves Herefordshire for Monmouthshire. The river flows through the middle of the county and through the county town of Hereford. Hereford was granted city status way back in the 11th century when the cathedral was first started by the Normans. What we see today, like so many cathedrals and churches, is a product of centuries of change and rebuilding. There used to be a large tower on the west end, but this fell down in the 18th century, taking down most of the end of the cathedral. It was rebuilt again at the start of the 20th century. Great parts of the city were demolished in the 19th century to make way for modernisation. Sounds familiar. However, two old buildings remain to remind us of Hereford's past. First is the early 17th century Coningsby Hospital, which are actually almshouses and are still home to 11 ex-servicemen. The other building is Old House. This timber framed house, surrounded by modern development, survived because its owner back in the 19th century refused to sell it for demolition. The River Wye is Britain's fifth longest river at 135 miles. It rises in the Cambrian Mountains in Wales. And by the time it reaches Herefordshire, it has a gentle flow to it. The river is largely unpolluted, and this makes it one of the best salmon fishing rivers in the country. It's also one of the most important rivers for nature conservation. At the southern end, the river winds down to Ross on Wye, where it heads towards Simmons Yacht. This is one of the best known sections of the river, a spectacular wooded valley carved out by the river over millions of years. The 
Staffordshire is on the border between England and Wales, and back in medieval days it was a constant battleground. At the northern end of Simmons Yacht is Goodrich Castle. The castle was begun by the Normans, and the square tower or keep in the middle is from around 1160. A hundred years later, new fortifications were added during the conquest of Wales, and the castle took on the appearance we see today. Many castles, Many castles in Herefordshire were built along the border, and a long town is right on the edge of the Welsh Black Mountains. The stone keep stands on what is known as a motte or defensive mound, and the first castle would have been built of wood by the Normans in the 11th century for the speed. As the times became more peaceful during the Tudor age, Croft Castle north of Lemster was turned into a house. The main castle towers remain, with the new house filled in between. The same family who built the castle back in Norman days still live in it today. Castles have always held a fascination, and in the 19th century, if you couldn't own one, you could always build one. And in Herefordshire, just to the east of Ledbury, is a wonderful romantic example. East and a castle. It looks as though it stood for the centuries, but what was in fact started in 1810 at huge expense, well over £8 million in today's money. Over 600 tonnes of wood was used, quite apart from all the stone, and the castle took 10 years to complete. Herefordshire is a rural county. Many of the market towns have only slowly altered over the centuries. This is Ledbury, just to the west of Eastman Castle, and dominating the centre of the town square is the Market Hall. This was built in 1653 and is supported by 16 massive posts. Legend has it that the oak came from a ship of the Spanish Armada. Probably a little fanciful, but a good story nonetheless. Lemster is to the north of the county, at the junction of two main roads. The town goes back to the 7th century and grew up into a prosperous market town full of old buildings. The town stands on one of the main roads from Wales to the Midlands, which would have been used by drovers to get their sheep and cattle to market. Herefordshire is known for its black and white villages, and Pembridge, a few miles west of Lemster, is a great example. A few miles south of Pembridge is Webley, and once again the black and white half-timbered houses dominate the village. Before we go on to look at some of Herefordshire's beautiful historic houses, here's a final reminder of that question for your chance to win that fantastic helicopter flight. 
Which composer is most associated with the Malvern Hills? Is it A. George Handel, B. Edward Elgar, or C. Benjamin Britten? Have a go. You never know. You could be sitting right here looking over the beautiful countryside as well as towns and cities and the gorgeous historic houses. And remember BJ's Clue, who wrote Land of Hope and Glory. Now don't forget you've got until midnight tonight to enter, so good luck. And, and talking, talking of beautiful houses, houses let's, let's take a look at one of the finest half-timbered half houses in the county, Lower Brockhampton Hall. It's, it's not far from the county border on the east side. The house was built at the end of the 14th century, which makes it over 700 years old. The gatehouse was built a hundred years later, and it's very rare and one of the few surviving examples left. The moat may have afforded a certain amount of protection, but it was probably more of a status symbol. By the 18th century, the family had moved up in the world and built a new home, Brockhampton House, less than a mile away. This meant that the Lower Brockhampton Hall remained largely unaltered. In the 1940s, it was handed over to the National Trust to protect it forever. In the 18th century, large estates were built up, like Barrington, north of Leominster. With a large classical portico overlooking the park, Barrington stands as a reminder of the wealth that came with land. The house stands in a landscape garden created by the 18th century master of this art, Capability Brown. And talking of landscape, one of the most beautiful valleys runs along the east side of the Black Mountains, Golden Valley. The valley follows the course of the River Dore. Today, this unspoilt rural landscape is almost like a time walk. This is a great place to walk at almost any time of the year. There are lots of footpaths to walk along, as well as quiet roads and lanes for a country drive, and always with the spectacular backdrop of the Black Mountains. Now, now this is a great place to end our look at Herefordshire on a sunny late afternoon when everything looks so beautiful. Now don't forget you could be seeing it for yourself flying in this helicopter by entering our competition. Lines close at midnight. Now BJ and I will be back next week to show you another two counties. We'll see you then. Bye bye. If you've not entered our competition yet for that helicopter flight, you can find all the details on our website. The address is on screen now. Lines will be open until midnight tonight. Say have a go and good luck.